Good morning, children. It's Saturday morning. And uh, I'm doing a video, another video in Speaker World. I said I'm calling these videos in these on this topic from now on. Uh, back when I was, you know, I've always been into speakers, but back when I got into them really heavy about 15 years ago, uh, my girlfriend at the time said I was, whenever I got, you know, on the computer or doing stuff like, uh, you know, having to do a, or down the basement or out in the garage working on speaker. I was in speaker world, that's <laughs> what she called it. So that eventually led to our breakup. So that'll tell you how possessed you can get with this kind of stuff. Actually, there was more to it, all right? But, you know, that contributed. it. I like my freedom. What can I say? Anyway, so I'm making this video to actually test a couple of speakers to demonstrate how you do that. And this is kind of in response to a few comments I got with regard to measuring the uh, voice coil on the one I took apart. All right, some people said you can't measure impedance that way. Well, I wasn't measuring impedance. I was measuring the DC resistance of this coil right here. That's very important. That's the, that's the like the starting point for speaker design as far as a voice coil goes. You know, you have the standards. These days it's four ohms and eight ohms, and I guess that's what they made this one to start with. And typically, you know, when the, once the manufacturer picks that standard, eight ohms or four ohms, they adjust it from there to tailor the speaker to what they actually want. So it might be less than eight ohms, or it might be, it's usually less. It's typically less. They usually take windings away, okay? But this one, as it turns out, was very close exactly to 8 ohms, or at least that's what it said on my uh, ohm meter. So to measure impedance is a different thing altogether, although it's kind of the same thing. The impedance of a, of a, a speaker is very complex. It's not a flat thing at all. It's, it, I'll draw it out, okay? I'll try to draw it the right way. It goes up in a big peak, and then it comes down, and then it starts to go up again. So it's kind of like, almost like a W with a flattened end, although it's a little bit up on the, on the beginning too, okay? And that big peak that you see is the resonant frequency of the driver. And for a, a woofer like this, that should be somewhere between, say, okay, this big woofer, somewhere between, say, 20 up to 40, you know, a smaller one be say maybe 30 up to 60 maybe 70 okay it depends upon how the thing is designed that's there's a lot of variables as to where that resonant frequency will will be okay but that shows up on the impedance measurement and that's what i'm going to be doing on my laptop computer i've got it connected to this gizmo right here which is a speaker tester from dayton audio Back uh, when I was doing this in my possessed days, <laughs> I was using a program called Speaker Workshop. And pre Speaker Watch is still around as far as I know. However, I don't think it'll work on uh, Windows 7, which I'm running here. I think you need Windows XP to run it. I don't think the guy who wrote, originally wrote it and just put it out there for free updated it for the, the newer operating systems. And not to mention that I would have to go down in my basement and dig out my jig and also relearn how to use the program. Whereas this thing here is very simple. I bought this a few months ago for this very reason, to get right back into speaker world. So what I have done here is I have the brother of the one that I took apart. I had two of those 18 inch woofers, okay? I took apart one and that's what I'm using the motor the magnet mainly, the magnet only actually, from to build the new one, but the other one's still intact. <coughs> you know, I kept it for comparison, and also I might use it for something eventually. I don't know, I got a lot of woofers, and then I'll have a new one that's big. So I have that set up here and a kind of a framework to support it so that not much is around it. That's the re you know, the ideal way to test these is to make sure that there's nothing, you know, that's gonna affect um, how it works in free air because that's the test and I've got it connected to the uh, tester 
right up to the leads on there. And all I need to do is press this button in the program and see it made that chirp and now it's giving me the impedance sweep okay that's a sweep that goes from zero right up to 20k and it shows the impedance and that's the blue line and that red line above you can ignore that that's phase that's a little bit more complex but as you can see, it's exactly as I described. It goes up in a peak. And looking at the peak, it looks like it's somewhere around 33, maybe. But I don't have to guess because those the figure for that is over on the side. And I'll get a picture of that and we'll go in close and have a look at those. So that gave me a lot of the parameters I need to design a box, but I'm not done yet. And that's the reason why you would measure me, like the reason why you would do this unless you have the published specifications. However, it's always better to measure it yourself. Take the driver you have, measure that, and go by that. Okay, then you take those specifications that you get from measuring it, you plug those into the program you use to design the box, and that gives you the best results. Okay, you can play with those numbers a little bit from there, and uh, depending on what you need. Like if you need a smaller box, within reason, you can do that. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is measure the VAS. And that's a little bit technical to explain, and I'm not sure I'm the best person to do that because I understand what it is, but I, you know, I can't really explain it very well. So we'll just say that it's, uh, it measures how, like how stiff the suspension is on the driver so that it can determine how big of a box you need. Okay, it's, it's a number that's critical for the size of the box. So the way you do that, well, there's two ways. You can build a box and put the speaker in a box. It doesn't matter how big it is, just as long as you have the internal volume minus the driver itself, and you can put that number into this program. Or the easier way is to add mass, and here I have weights. I made these, actually. These are each 100, well, they're, they were supposed to be 100 grams. This one's 101. And this one's 100, so that's a total of 200 grams. You need that for a big woofer like this. Uh, the bigger the woofer, the stiffer the suspension, the more weight you need. And the way I'm going to fasten these to the uh, cone is to use rare earth magnets from the back. You, there's another way you can use something sticky like blue tack. But another uh, source of weights are... are uh, big washers like this okay so that's another option but you have to measure the magnet too like how much that weighs these are two and a half grams each and I'm just going to put them right on the cone and then I can enter that total weight into the program and test it again hopefully that's enough weight 206 grams so I'll just press the measure VAS number button Okay. Okay, I have a number. And that is 184.7 liters. So that's the important number. This also gives you some more numbers as well. It gives you the SPL, the sound pressure level or the sensitivity. Measured at one watt at one meter is 93.31. From those numbers that I have, once you plug those into a design program like Unibox that I use, it'll fill in some other ones like CMS, which is the compliance of the uh, the stiffness, the actual stiffness of the uh, suspension. It will also give you the motor strength, which is BL in Tesla Tesla meters, I think it is. I'm not sure. Okay, like I said, I'm not an expert. Stuff I learned long ago about this stuff has basically evaporated from my head. You know, it's slowly coming back, but, you know. Anyway, so, yeah, that's that one. I've got another one, though, that I want to test, so I'm going to get that one set up as well. So this one is a 12-inch woofer. I have four of these, actually. I bought these a long time ago. Uh, I got a good deal on them. I think it was 50 bucks each. These are made by, these were custom made by Eminence. A guy actually ordered, like, 50 of them. Uh, for some kind of thing he was getting involved in and it never 
uh, came to fruition. So he sold them off and I bought four of them, 200 bucks. Um, these are exceptionally you know, good woofers. So I've been thinking about what I could do with them. One idea was to build a very tall, narrow subwoofer with four of these in them, you know, an array, which would be interesting. Okay. So and test that in exactly the same way. I have the program. Once again, measure in free air, chirp, and we get a very similar impedance curve. And I'll put that on the screen so you can see that as well, along with the measure parameters. All right, and this one you can see that this is once again an eight ohm driver. The RE is 7.313 ohms. Um, the resonant frequency is 27.96, so 28 hertz, which is much lower than the bigger one, actually. So this will actually should dig down a bit deeper. It depends on how you build the box, right? I think this one is suitable for vented, though. I'm not sure. Uh, you can look at the QTS number and know that, but there, like, I've forgotten what the uh, range is for vented. And then there's a range for for sealed, like a closed box. And then there's a range for open baffle. I've got a, a I got actually four more warflers that are very well suited to open baffle. Uh, the QTS on those is above one. I, I'm pretty sure I measured those long ago. So yeah, the same thing applies for the measuring of the vast, except you use smaller weights. I have two that are. Well, this is 47 grams. These are just pieces of square steel, by the way, that I cut. And plus the magnet, of course. So I'll go ahead and I'll put those on and we'll go through the same routine again. Okay, I've got the weight put in, which is 101 grams. I've got the um, piston diameter, which is the size of the cone, plus half of the surround. And that's 254 millimeters. Uh, I do all speaker stuff in metric, by the way. Uh, because it's just okay. It's the way I was doing it before Right people seem to think I'm I, I don't understand I'm very well versed in metric. Okay, understand merch I just prefer to work in inches for most things woodworking and it makes sense too Okay, so I'm gonna press the measure vast thing again, and hopefully that's enough weight And it is And we got a number The vast on this one is 142.8 liters I can't remember what the other one was more than that, but not a lot more. So yeah, that's all there is to it, right? You just need the equipment. You need some knowledge about it, right? But if you're all you're interested in is making a voice coil, a new one, and you want you know the place to start, all you need is an ohmmeter to measure the original. I like your nurse's uniform guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Well, they're totally inappropriate for the occasion. Well, I didn't know we were going to dinner. That's because you weren't invited. Take it easy, Max.